Denise Ramon at deniseramon.com. And a big shout out to my boy, Eric. We've been working very hard together in the she shed. So he, he, he says, yes, and he says, hi. And yes, he was uh, making comment about that, but I was ignoring it. Um, he, he said, y'all work very well together. Yeah. And I got my said, copper fit, copper, I have copper everything. And my said, Yeah, he said, y'all work very well together. And um, mm -hmm. he says, it's been a lot of fun, um, a lot of growth on both parts, he's saying. In my case, yes, I have learned so much in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. even. It's just incredible. He says, as you, you expand and grow, so does he. Mm -hmm. and, um, but he says, yeah, he's, um, he's really enjoying that working with you. I do have, it's yes, good recording. Just want to make sure. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Eric. And I love you. And is Wayne Dyer here? We just had a great interview with Louise Hay. So I think it's a good, you know, segue to go to the great, the great late Wayne Dyer. Ooh, he just walked in. Oh, wow. So not late to the party? He's, he's so powerful. Oh my God. Whew. Tell me what you see and feel. Oh my God, his energy is just so expansive. It's, um, I have chills all over me. I'm like, he's, oh my God, it's so whew, wow. real powerful. Just I was oh, not expecting that. This is how me either. It's just, he's, in. he's, um, it's such a, um, a wow. He, I'm like, blown away by this. Um, he says, um, he's coming in and he's very casual. He's got like on linen type, like what you would see a yoga person that doing yoga, a male person. He's got bare feet. I feel like he's sitting in um, what looks to me like Hawaii. Um, and he says, um, cause that's where I lived and loved it best, the energy. Mm -hmm. um, he says it's he feels very honored and it's like i can hear his voice he feels very honored to to be here um to be asked to be here i feel like he's been he has been asked it's almost like a talk show like he's been channeled before by others mm -hmm. and um and he's just he's very humbled by it he's a very um who is energy? He's he kind of like backed away a little bit because it was so intense. Um, oh, but he's um, he why said, is it energy? Yeah, tell, tell well, go ahead, finish. But I, are you do you have a Christ like energy, a Buddhist like energy? What is it that you've got your energy then? He says his energy is of of, of, of pure love. If he goes, Yes, it's Christ consciousness, it's Buddha, Buddha consciousness, and that. It's, it's the, um, he says, it's what I call, um, um, what I just started calling source energy. I just started calling it super source energy. Oh. He says it's that it's, he's in just his purest form. He said, um, yeah, he's, he's just in his purest form. And, and it's just, he wanted us to be able to, um, have some of that, be in that presence. Um, um, it's what he's always talked about is what he says it's what he's always tried to give us when he was here yes because now, not everybody comes in their purest form but they can i guess the interviews we've had in the past is that correct he says yes and some of it is is um he said some people choose to come into like where they were as to what we know because that oh. also can be the person that's channeling it, that's what they're expecting and that's what they get. That's what the audience is wanting. And he says, I personally talking about me wanted him as his authentic self to come through and he's in his purest form and um, which is, which we all are, but we still bring in whatever it is that the, um, it, it depends on the audience, he says. It depends on the audience. Right, so you so, said, so what you said that this is what you teach. What that everybody is? Are you saying that you're you were there to teach or on earth to teach that we are all we all are just these vast divine individuals or entities or energies? He says yes to find our way there. 
to oh. turn um, to find our way there because it's like he says we were were lost, yeah. you know, um, through our experiences we get lost and because we're so heavily weighted down from the pain, the anger, the hurt, the fear, whatever it is, he says, we're so bogged down with it. And through his work, um, he went through the work that he did to find his way through. Um, he wanted to share that with the world. And he knew at a young age um, that that's what he was supposed to do, was to share mm -hmm. what it is that he, what he discovered through his own path and the healing. He was a very, um, very inquisitive. Like he always, there was always wanted to know more about whatever it is. He just wanted to know more. Yeah. So, well, of course, you know, the, we get mired down in our experiences. So true, the human experience, but it's been such a vital part of the contrast or polarity consciousness that we've been living through prior to the beginning of this age of Aquarius, where we're now hopefully entering the unity consciousness. But it, it was important. But I, I, what you're saying is some people just get lost in the blackness, lost in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the many, one of the greatest, that it was a beacon to people like hey find your way to you to yourself find your way home to you is that what you're saying right now he said yes um i think i just know. channeled that from somebody i don't know yes she did he says um because that i know i'm not that smart that's not <laughs> smart for me <laughs> no i'm seriously that, that did not seem that seemed way too profound for little old mama lisa well Eric says, you know, earlier about y'all two working together and, and you do channel, he says, you just, um, you just got to sink into those shoes more. But um, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he says, you can call me Wayne. And I just like, well, I don't know. I just, but he says that he learned through his journey. He just had this knowing that that journey he went through was so necessary. He says, it's like, um, just you just have to go through grades one through 12, you know, to get into college, you know, you have to finish that platform, so to speak. And then you get into college and you get into the fun stuff or the good stuff. He knew like his growing up was a part of the requisite of what was needed to get to where he was. So he was learning along the way how to forgive and how to give it love. But do you want to go through the journey of your life and, and point out salient tidbits of things that made you find your way back to you, the divine you, like starting from childhood on, you want to go through that journey with us? He said he can. He said yes. He said one of the things that <clears throat> he's talking about um, homes, different homes, and I'm uh, orphanages. That's what he's talking oh, about, okay. or foster care, or something. Is is um, <clears throat> um, he said he didn't understand in the beginning why he was put there, mm. but. Uh, he said towards the end, he knew that um, he knew he was put there out of love because of the circumstances. Yeah. And even though he still had some feelings about it, there was still a knowing about that. Yeah. And he also, that's what gave him the ingredients the energy or whatever you want to call it to make him want to move forward oh. and um he said reading a lot gave him a lot of comfort because mm -hmm. he found a lot of wisdom in reading so that was like the one thing he's shown like he could take with him no matter where he went he could take the book yeah, or colors. or read it and then have the information and expand and so um he 
he says he also believes that doing the reading helped him in school because I don't feel he makes me feel like he wasn't the most brightest kid in school as he was going but reading really helped him because it it comforted him it he said it soothed him to some degree and that's what helped him to move forward and what, not look what, back at how bad it was yeah what was your favorite book as a child and your favorite book as an adult the, the one that had the most profound impact on you there he's showing me there there was an autobiography one and i'm trying to see if i can get a name if i can get there was an autobiography one when he was a kid and it feels like it was about um an a, an orphan there was an or, a, a runaway or an orphan i feel like more of a runaway or something from thing from the environment they were in he's showing me there was a book that he read about that um i i i can't get the name oh, of the and and then um it was fine also too he one of the books that he read when he got older was um it was some form of psychology book or something like behaviors and stuff mm. um it's something to do with behaviors and um okay. he says that's what got him interested in teaching in the beginning um but he didn't stay in teaching very long he said it was, was in that, that kind of setting yeah what was your favorite book uh, about that has to do with spirituality um he says there's so many you know there's just he says um but well, which one was the first one of the first that had such a profound impact on you which one like wow this shit is awesome he's saying the first book that he wrote oh okay do you think it was channeled to some degree he says yes it was he said a good portion of it was channeled cool. a good portion um and um it it still is on a like the bestsellers list wow. he showed me yeah he said well, what yeah. about from another person before you wrote that book what 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 other spiritual book was one of them just name one that is he's talking about some of the ones that he really liked and they're not real old but he um but he really liked um the ones from um he said he really liked the books from uh he's showing me conversations with god oh well, yeah he, he liked those a lot he thought those were really good okay. um he's also talking about eckhart tolle um and he uh, says uh, with his books and he says of course louise hayes books and stuff like that um he loved those um he uh he really liked um he's showing me autobiographies he really liked um autobiographies about people and i'm he's um he's showing me like a lot of different people that he read about but just their their stories about how they became to what they were um yeah but let's let's move forward and say so the books really were one thing that helped lead you into understanding the divinity of you what else ha happened in the course in your journey what other significant moments or experiences uh led you back to you he says my children oh okay my children you learn a lot about spirituality if you open your heart to it to yes yes and um he said you know that was a turning point for him because his his background on on parenting wasn't he didn't really have the best examples i guess he yeah. say shown but he knew that he had to do stuff different and he says i wasn't always good at it i didn't always do it perfect yeah. i made a lot of mistakes but he says my children were the biggest motivators they're the ones that pushed me even more oh my god to, uh, children to me 
oh. made me want to be a better person. My kids, well, children overall, but especially my children. All yes. right, so that. So what next? Were there any obstacles, any challenges that you had in life that made that guided you back to you? Any loss, tragedy, illness? Um. He said all of those things. He says, um, I feel like he had lost a good friend mm. through the way he showed me a good friend. Mm. Um, and then the alone time that you have where all your stuff just starts to surface. And mm. he knew he, he said he knew he, he was better than his thoughts, but his thoughts sometimes would overpower him. He also said he did suffer with some depression along the way and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he was very much into finding a source of information that didn't, uh, uh, I feel like not religion, but a, a spiritual path. Yep. And, and he just started, um, he said he journaled a lot um, in writing. Yeah. Um, he also he journaled an awful lot he's telling me and um that was real important um he also wrote um started he knew he had to change his mind his thought process and so the things that he did is the things that he wrote about in books and sold and the stuff that he also taught with i guess seminars and classes or whatever is the things that he did himself Everything that he wrote about and everything that he talked about is stuff that he did for himself mm -hmm. as well. It's cool. So you were, well, first of all, let me ask you a quick question. Do you happen to know what happened to your birth parents? Did they die? Did they give you up? Or, or if you don't want to share that, that's totally fine. No, he said, no, he goes, because that's important for people. You know, it was important for him. Yeah. You know, he really... I don't feel like his father was ever in the picture the way he's showing it to me because he's kind of blurred. But um, his mother, he said, um, he lived with his mother for a little while, he said, and then um, financially just couldn't afford him. Yeah. And you have to, he's saying back then they didn't have the resources like we do now because you know you can get free rent food stamps all kinds of stuff medical and back then and um it was just too much pressure and so his mom did what um she thought was best he said that bothered him for a long time it's like why why me and i feel like there were a couple of them that were given up all right so um did you ever reconnect with her or with a sibling or I don't, I don't yes know. he said yes but you know it was a uh, um he said i feel like he did connect the way he said i don't know if it's like he saw her in person or how but he did reconnect but um probably on the other side right and you probably oh, definitely on the other side but i feel like it was more of a a peace bridging things together no blame no, nothing. It was just bringing peace, just mending, not mending because there's nothing broken, he says, but just making peace. I, I thought he said he did connect with his mother later. So find out when you when you crossed over that it was, a, you probably knew before, that it was all a spiritual contract uh, between the two of you to teach. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that? But that were you, when he was here. What did he learn from that? Or whatever, even as from the your your perspective as a spirit before incarnation, you said, "I want this to happen to me with my mother and me being put into an orphanage, so that I can learn about blank." He said he came here to be to be a teacher. Okay, he came here for that. But he was that also to? learned how to forgive or, or you know or to he said yes definitely to forgive how love is so empowering and um learn a lot about ego he says and um just um you know he's saying with ego you know about judging people and 
and and you know you just he said it helps you to what he learned was how to expand because his beliefs in that were not ever put into a box mm. you, he says you could never say this is how he believes because it was always expanding and growing okay and so he said and um that he says what he's saying now and he knew that to a degree here but that is <clears throat> so expansive in our world right now because we need his information and so what you learned you transmuted into lessons for the rest of us so you were diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia in 20, 2009 and claimed to have treated it with positive thinking, daily exercise, and psychic surgery performed remotely by John of God. Now, from your perspective as a spirit, it's a great question. Can you explain what really healed you? Was it all those things put together or one thing more than the other? And if so, if the remote healing by John of God actually worked, can you please explain that? Blah, 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 blah. He's kind of laughing. He goes, he says, that's a, a lot. He said, a mouthful. He said, Yes, it did work. He said, when you're in those circumstances, we are supposed to reach out for help. We're not supposed to do this ourselves. And he says, and people weren't so happy with me with their comments about why can't I heal myself and just doing that. He says, we're not meant to do everything by ourselves. It's me who allows it to happen, he's saying about him getting into that place, but to reach out for help. Yeah. Um, he says, it's kind of like you cut your finger off and you, you don't sit there and stitch it up yourself if you know how to do that. What healed you the most? What do you think? I'm sorry to cut you off. He, he says, um, first he says love is what healed him. Mm. love is what healed him well, but, but it's being uh, him being present and showing up and going to someone else who is thought of so highly and he says and this is a non-ego form but he goes to someone else that's thought of so highly and then you have this very famous person popular person go to the, another person and it's like oh my god he needs help so it's kind of like let's everybody know i need help too and <clears throat> and he says and it's just the 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 energy the frequency of um he says and i just knew it was going to work but self i believed it Self-love, self -love. self -love. Yes. most important thing for healing. Right, yes. So the spiritual basis of that illness for you? Was it for you to learn that you could heal yourself? Was it to, I mean, what, well, what, what was the spiritual basis of it, I guess? He said, I had some more clearing out to do. Okay. Because he says, you're, you know, you, um, he's saying there's a few people on this planet that have got it all cleared out, so to speak. But he had layers too. He had things still to work on as well. And he says, and this was letting him know he still had some stuck pieces that needed to, well, some thin yeah. layers and to needed to be, to be worked on and to, to give in. What, um, what thoughts created that disease? You know, thought creates reality. Were there thoughts of self-loathing? Were there thoughts that I'm old, I'm probably going to get sick pretty soon. I don't know when you, you know. I mean, what thoughts led you he, to that leukemia? He laughed. He said one of the things that feared him was because he was in the light of everybody and this, he said, using a word kind of freely, like a guru type person, you know, that someone that everybody, he said, there was a little bit of fear that, um, Like, what if I get sick? What are people going to think? Because then it's yeah. like, oh, so you're not doing no, your when work. When I read parenting book, same thing. When I started having trouble with with a kid, it's like, oh my god, if they only knew, Jesus. So yeah, I know, I totally get it. Yeah. All right. Um, how is the idea of heaven you have here on Earth in the physical 
compared to how it really is. He says that the only the differences for him is um, he now can feel it and he can feel it all at once. He's had moments, he said, when he was here of experiencing the other side, mm -hmm. but it's the, the frequency, he says, the voltage, the, the energy is, um, words can't describe it, he says, because it's the most ultimate, purest form of unconditional love. That's why with I'm... no walls, no yeah. boundaries, no nothing. That's beautiful. Now, an Indian mystic had stated that the emotion you are feeling at death is what is going to stick with you on the other side. I don't know about that. Abort, abort. <sighs> I don't. I don't think that's true. Is that true? If you choose to let it be true, I guess. But he says, you know. If that's how they believe, then it's true for them, but it's not true. You know, it's right. because well, you shed that stuff. Yes, you, uh, you shed human emotion. Some people take a little while to shed it. Exactly. It takes a little while for some. They love to hang on to their humanness. Now, when you crossed over, did you expect what you actually saw? Or did you even have any expectations? He said, of course, I had expectations because um, more curious, um, but um, it's better than what he was curious or expecting because he says, you know, we get to dip our toes in what it is where, where I am, but we don't really get to fully feel it 100% it's like we get to dip our toes so where but he what on the on the other side you okay. know it's like when you're here you get to dip your toes in it and that's what keeps you going for more and more but he says for him um he says i had a freedom here on this planet but the freedom is just incredible the freedom from everything is just incredible mm -hmm. and he says words there are no words to describe it okay on the other side are you still helping others with your inspirational me messages in other words what your life's worth on the in the afterlife oh he says definitely yes and he says he works with his daughters or something he's showing he works with his daughters yes definitely oh definitely all right. Yes. Who most inspired you in this lifetime and what is your soul connection to them? Louise Hay, was it? I mean, you can just pick one. They can be tied with others, but just, just throw one out there. He had a lot, he said. There was never just, yeah, there wasn't just one. Um, and he says Louise Hay was a big inspiration mm -hmm. for him. Um, he also talks about, um, Deepak Chopra was a big one for him. Yeah. The Dalai Lama was immensely huge for him. He just shows me he had such great honor for that man. Any political uh, figures like Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, and any religious figures like Jesus or, or Gandhi or not Gandhi, he's not, well, or Buddha, I mean, that kind of thing. Well, he said all of them Jesus, you know, um, Mandela, he was definitely intrigued with Mandela, you know, it just, it was amazing for him to be at peace with what all he went through. And um, he says, yeah, all of them, um, even the, um, the very devout, well known atheist people intrigued him. Oh, intrigued, yeah. In fire so um well, well we'll go on with that that that's good but 
uh, in, oh, did uh, what about John of God? Did he inspire you, or was he also just one that intrigued you? So to speak? He said he. Um... He said, yes, he inspired him and he intrigued him with what all he could do. He thought that was real fascinating because I don't, because he doesn't show me that that's what he really did him, his own self. He did right. other things that were real, but he didn't do that. So that intrigued him and that's what got him looking more. And I don't feel like he was the way he's showing me. He didn't just say, oh, well, Steve is a real good this. Okay, let me go there. He investigates and researched okay. and stuff like that and um, and but, waited till he felt guided. So yeah, he was inspired by him. He was fascinated by him, by the way. Um, so you believe in the power of psychic surgery? Like this oh, yes. ego or something, I can't remember the name. So it's, uh, you, and did you feel like John of God did have something to do with your cure from leukemia? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's what you said was all. Okay. Um, yeah. There's a lot of talk now about the rapture when Jesus returns and takes believers home and the people are correlating this with the, uh, this with the population choosing three-dimensional and five-dimensional timelines. Okay. So are you seeing a literal rapture coming or is it for just people who are ascending basically toward 5D? Jesus is coming. Look busy. I love that one. I don't know what it means. So, I don't know what it means. It's like look busy so it won't sit at the table at lunch table with you, or is it busy so you, you look busy because you better be doing what you want to be doing. You know, he says about Jesus. Oh, oh. It depends on how you look at it. He says, you know, he's that was one of the things he always talked about is your perception, your thoughts, yeah. how you think, and he says that's why he was so. He talked about that a lot about your thoughts. He's showing me. Um, he says, you can look at it and he says, and people can say the rapture is happening now with everything that's going on. He feels that it's beautiful what's happening now. Uh, what he's, um, he says, um, it's whatever you want to believe it to be, you yeah. know, he says, you know, there's going to be a section that believe that are rapture or true rapture is coming and that's where they want to believe and that's, and that's okay. He says, but more people are realizing um and he says and that comes from fear um but he says and yes uh, and he says and that's okay too you yeah. know but he says it's about your frequency though everything is a frequency yes exactly and it's about where you're going uh, um he but says i feel course, like people would think that they don't have any control and jesus is gonna say okay come on guys get in the bus we're leaving come on go y'all y'all stay behind he says that's, that's the thing you don't ever based. you don't ever get left behind no but that's fear-based and that's also yes. power to giving away your power too so that's just my he, he says that's exactly true and this is what um people are learning that they do have more power over themselves than yeah. they thought and um mm -hmm. and that's part of what his teachings is what he's showing me about you taking control of your life you yeah. taking control of whatever's going on and once you come back to you and realize what an incredible force of nature of divinity you are then that's a lot easier to do if you yeah, he's, eating, he's eating chocolate right now i don't know if he ate chocolate when he was here oh, obviously God, i don't know but he's eating like chocolate <laughs> oh you like chocolate he's saying yeah he said a little bit of chocolate and he's eating some he's just sitting here eating some chocolate like why don't you share with the rest of the class i know all right so if you were still alive on earth dr d what would your next book be about great question they're all good he's he um says he says that is a good question he said um it's about um he's showing me it has to do with the power of nutrition oh. um how we the power of nutrition on how how we fuel our bodies and that and and the power of nutrition um because how we eat has, is a big play on how we 
how our body breaks down things and how we can stay healthy. He's saying, he's saying, um, of but course, again, I, I pose this to Louise Hay. If we're all that divine and vastly powerful, it seemed like we would have the ability to break down and reassemble atoms and molecules, et cetera, to create our own perfect, perfectly optimized nutritional status. He says, you're correct. And he says, we are designed to be able to do that. But we, so we learn but, how. but we have over the past hundreds of years have given that responsibility to others. Yeah. And so we don't even know what we're doing. Not everybody, but he says, but, and this is what his teachings were about is us taking back our power right, and not at, giving it away. Oh, that is so wise. I'm going to have to reread some of your books. Looking back at your work, is there anything that you would change in the spiritual forward slash inspirational messages you gave to people on earth? Anything at all? Like a racy, racy. <laughs> uh, he says no. I didn't think so. And, and, and I bet the answer is the same for this one. Do you have any regrets looking back on your life? Any regrets at all? He says no. None, 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 none. He says no. You know, he, he says no. No. Well, most people we interview, they don't because any mistakes or any thing that they that in a human sense seemed regrettable is not because they valued them as teachable moments as wonderful experiences to help in their soul's evolution so um. well he said he he's he's saying you know he he did a lot of healing work when he was here he did a lot of that regrets and remorse and shame and he did a lot of that early on in his life and later you know um he did a lot of that he's saying and he learned from that and he says you know um he lived a very comfortable life and i don't mean like extravagance wise yeah. but just his rituals of what he did and that's what brought him peace yeah. he did exactly what he wanted to do and he always made sure he's saying he wrote a gratitude list and followed it up with love because he says when you're in those places you can't be um a butthead to everybody or to anybody because you those don't mix he says love is what stops all that resistance and stuff and so he says no he doesn't have any regrets he's um it's so good yeah, no. I mean, he Love, left a so really important. good legacy behind. Yeah, it keeps your energy, vibra your vibrational frequency high. And once you fill your heart with gratitude and love, there's no space for anything else. Correct. He yeah. says you're right. You don't want nothing in there. No, it can't get in. It repels all the bad stuff. Uh, all right. So did Dr. Wayne know about the darker side of John of God and Oprah? I, I didn't know. If so, when and how did he find out? If he knew, did he distance himself from that dark? I don't even know. I don't know much about that. But was there a darker side to John of God and Oprah? He um, he's not answering that. He's well, I don't going, think he's good. He's, he's, he's not going blood. there. He says, you know. Yeah. There's a dark side to everybody if you want to look for I, it. I just don't or, think so. that's almost for your. Good yeah, question, he says he, but I think I'd like to skip that too. Um, is there another life that you want to share that you had or will have future life that most influenced your one? There's no time. So most influenced your one as Dr. Wayne Dyer. Um, he said, of course, all lives and in help influence each life, but he's saying, uh, he's um i'm telling him to go back to the one in the past because he's showing me one in the future too so i'm asking him to let's do back and then let's do future he shows me that um he lived somewhere in ireland is what he's showing me as a um sheep herder i guess is what it looks like 
and um, he was a young boy and um, very poor in that. Uh, he showed me with bare feet. Um, and he says, um, and now he's shown me him being in bare feet. Now he says, there's nothing like bare feet. But he said that life was very poor to our standards, but it was a very peaceful life, a really good life, uh, very rich in a lot of areas. And um, he said when he was here, he felt like he knew that energy, that, that type of life in a sense when he started on his path in this lifetime. He said that one influenced him a lot. Um, um, well, no. we don't have to do the future one because we're running out of time. But okay. But um, so basically like prioritizing peace and love in your life, is that what you got out of that? And we're able to, to spread to others? He okay. said, yes, but you know, he said the, the main thing would he he said yes because in that other life he realized that when you're at peace everything around you looks beautiful yeah yeah and it doesn't fun. matter you, what you have and he said in this life he just knew he had to change his thoughts because yeah. it wasn't serving him because i feel like he could have gone down a darker road if he real easily if he wanted to so let's talk about the connection between peace and love. Is it love that brings you peace that will help you love and realize the beauty around you? Or what, what's the connection? Peace and love. What came first? Chicken or the egg? He said love. So love. Love comes yeah. first because that's what we are is love. That's mm -hmm. our frequency is love. Ooh, love it. Uh, all right. So, um, all right. The last couple of questions. You know, I, I, we touched on this before but if you had to pick one lesson that you that was the most important for you to learn on earth what would it be that we are not our bodies that's what you learned that's pretty cool that's important we are not our bodies very very much so all right so uh, so once you separate yourself from the physical body and realize it's different then you can tap into an amazingly vast source of energy, the vastness of you that you would not be able to really see, I don't think, if you just combined yourself, felt like, oh, well, I'm just me, my arms and legs and earlobes, right? Is that what you're saying? He said, yes, well, when you, when you get out of your thought that you're just your body, yeah. Then you have freed yourself up to th to to start exploring and and thinking more, because when we get stuck on our bodies, then we get stuck in the ego, and then we start oh, yeah. picking it apart about what isn't perfect, what isn't good, what isn't whatever. You know, we there's always going to be something we find not right with it if we just think we're just this body. He goes, this body is so who we are is so much more and when we can get out of that process of thinking we're just our body then we can just really expand and go to other places and, and it makes it easier for us to learn how to love each other and get rid of our own self-loathing which creates disease or inhibits cures etc correct or and, so, go ahead. and he wants to say this our bodies are meant to heal itself mm okay that's true it's so perfect yeah yeah we stand in this way sometimes right we 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 the majority of us always stand in our way yeah i know I've allowing, but we can heal ourselves is what he said it had something to do with what you were talking about this getting that would you say molecules or whatever he oh yeah reassembling and disassembling yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I can't believe, I'm so happy that the Atlanta Scalar Service I did myself, I am i don't have high blood pressure anymore. I used to be on two really big, major antihypertensives, and I'm on no more effects or two. It's just incredible. Is that because I've discovered how to love myself and also the scalar energy delivering the intent to my, to my DNA, my energy and all that? Yes. He said both. Yes. You decided this is not what you want anymore. Yeah. He's you did not want that dependency. You did not want to, to be that anymore. So, so you 
started changing your frequency, which allowed the scalar energy to come in. He said, that scalar energy you're doing is beautiful work, but you aligned with it for allowing it to happen and to take place. He said, yes. And my penchant for wanting to two glasses of wine or a scotch or whatever it's gone i just can't believe it's just so freeing once you love yourself along with scalar energy you're you know i think that self-love alone can heal all but um all right so what is your message your final message to people it doesn't have to be final you can come back on to people um during these times and, and maybe in a way that's going to somehow in, in, add this next the, the the similar question what is your mission what was your mission on earth he says you know if he was still here his message would be the same as um what and what some other people his colleagues he says are saying what's going on it's he says uh, many of us are too focused out on the outside of what's going on and we're not focusing on the inside what's going on yes so what is this start looking at that oh i like that start looking at that and getting that out he says so many people are feeling powerless like they don't have any control over anything that's going on he says we have so much power so much control but it we got to do it from in here so work from in here and then that what you're doing is your vibration just feeds out he says it just does and he said um even that was hard for him in the beginning to comprehend how that works. And he says, but it does. It's that frequency. I, I'm starting the last few weeks. I've been discovering that the power within each of us, because when I do the healing, the collective and mother Gaia work that I do every day now, I feel this, the power of love is so intense I, I cry, I sob, mm -hmm. I just can't contain that love. It, it's just, it's like how you were when Wayne Dyer first walked in, <laughs> that incredible sense of what? The WTF feeling, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. amazing. All right, so anything else to you? Eric, you wanna ask uh, Dr. Dyer anything? Or Denise, would you like to ask uh, Dr. Dyer anything? You know, um... Eric is, Eric, you know, is, is right there with him. And I'm like, like, isn't that pretty awesome? Your son's with him. <laughs> I just think oh. that's so cool. I just think that's so cool. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> um, but he, you know, Eric says, you know, to, he's, he's asking, but then it's kind of like, they're both talking to each other. So he, Eric is saying, you know, because I'm just like, they're both just slow down. And he's, Eric says, that's all we have to do. It's so simple is do one thing loving for ourselves and a fellow person. Oh yeah. That's all we have to do every day. That's one thing loving for yourself and for another person. You smiling to the person delivering your, your, um, quarter pound of a cheese, the McDonald's drive through anything. Or letting somebody, Yes. Let somebody out. Let them get in front of you. Um, um, he said, just do something loving for yourself and for another person. Mm -hmm. Do that every day. And, and I feel like Dr. Wayne Dyer and your son are saying this together the way they're like this. Yeah. You do this every day for a week and you're just going to see amazing things take place in your life. Because what you're doing is you're, they're saying you're connecting with the with source, which just expands that to you is what they're saying. It's just, I mean, I wish y'all could feel people. what they're sure, you know. List once a day, loving to you, loving to someone else. And Rope. they're saying it's like rubbing lotion on, if you put lotion on, like be conscious of it. Love, put the, you know, feel that as you're rubbing it on your arms or your legs or whatever you do the love your for your own body. and put the love in it like and just say this is so nice i get to do this for my legs something that simple you don't have to purchase nothing or, or anything or like you said you know you could just give someone a smile it's and, so simple and, yes it's pretty simple um 
All right, I guess one last thing uh, is, well, I guess, is there anything else you'd like to say? And also I want to ask, or you ask everyone, is there something that nobody really knows about that's kind of fun? Like, like, do you wear, do you take your soft, soft do you smell your socks when you take them off? Did you do that? Or, or like um, Madame Curie so, sewed a teddy bear in the inside of one of her skirts, little things like that, anything fun. Well, he said he was very obsessed with his teeth. He really prided himself on his teeth. Okay. He said he did a lot of flossing in it. That was real important to him. Um, he wasn't very materialistic either type person. I didn't should. know. It didn't seem like, yeah. He, he wasn't. Um, and he liked to walk around barefoot, he said. Always. Awesome. Anything else? Anybody? Um, no. He, the, um, I feel like Eric and him are going to go hang out the way they're Go Just hang out. Go yeah, out. we're going to go like, together. Um, but thank no, you. But but he says thank you. He's thank he you. he. Oh, any advice for Atlanta Scaler or Channeling Eric? Anything? Any any advice to me? He says believe in what you're getting because he says when you're out there and you're she shed, you're channeling. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting it. I'm I'm really I'm getting that. Just he says just go with it and. If you hear him talking to you, if you hear Dr. Wayne Dyer talking to you, he's saying that's him talking to you because mm -hmm. he is really fascinated with the work that you're doing because oh. because of the the spectrum because you're going from one end of the spectrum of being a medical doctor to this. He said this is huge for you. Yeah. Okay. All and right. He's Thank he's real. He really. He's, he, he thanks you. He really thanks you for your work. He, he Thank really, you for your work. Um, you, he says, thank you. always a big inspiration to me. And of course, Denise Ramon, thank you so much for being such a wonderful voice for both, both Wayne and Eric. Y'all. Well, both. Thank all of you. Are, I mean, I'm giving out your email address. Denise Ramon .com. And I love you all three. I love you all you guys out there. I really, really do. Don't make me start sobbing again. Okay. Yeah. They love, they're both saying, um, Eric is saying, I love you, mom. And um, Dr. Wayne Dyer is like this. And he says, love to everyone. Love to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Take care.